Hello! Uh, welcome to the Nighthawk Pro Gaming Gaming Lounge. Uh, my name is Ben Acevedo. I'm the Brand Experience Manager for Nighthawk Pro Gaming. Hi, and uh, this is Abhay Borkar. I'm the Product Manager for Netgear Nighthawk Product Line and XR500. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about what is a gaming router. A lot of people have been asking the question, what is it that separates it? Uh, you know, from the other from other routers, and so we're, we're going to take some of your questions. We're going to give you a chance of winning the XR five hundred. You're going to use the hashtag uh, NPG Live uh, and, and bring in your questions, and uh, we'll just kind of start walking through a, a little bit about uh, the differences in routers. And I'll let you take this away. Go ahead. Thank you, Ben. So uh, for today's topic, we just thought we should get back to basics uh, because we heard a lot of times questions about uh, why do I need a gaming router? Why isn't my current router or the gateway that I get from a service provider not good enough for gaming? So uh, here I'm here to explain some differences that can help you choose the right product for your need. So you know, here we have a perfectly good entry-level router. Uh, it's adequate for day-to-day -day surfing and HD streaming through the house on mobile devices and you know, getting few devices on the internet. It's good enough to get you connected to the internet um, and uh, you know, go for casual gaming. Okay. Is, is with this, is it uh, the amount of devices or is it the, the type of traffic that really um, differentiates between? So it's mostly amount of uh, devices or the, the capacity or the performance that a router can get. It depends on that. So this is where we have perfectly a uh, you know example. This is Netgear Nighthawk. Netgear Nighthawk routers have been around for almost two to three years. They have been very popular, not only for their premium quality, but also the premium internals, right? So these mm -hmm. have like dual core processors and gigabit ethernet ports and very high power amplifiers and for Wi-Fi coverage. So these took the game from an entry level router and upped it significantly where you could get much better coverage, mm -hmm. you could attach a lot more devices and you could get that speed for your internet without missing a beat. So, so I know that the Nighthawks uh, have been like super popular with gamers over the last few years and so taking what uh, what we learned with uh, the Nighthawk and just being a high performance router, you then worked on taking it to the next step, and that would be the XR500. Yeah, exactly. So as as we uh, brought more and more Nighthawk routers to the market, right? Uh, uh, we had been learning from what our customers want, and especially looking at the pain points that uh, gamers are going through. Over the last few years, the online gaming has uh, exploded exponentially. So the awareness of uh, ping latency and the lag and uh, how does the traffic inside the house affect your gaming, even if you are wired, right? Mm -hmm. I think most people, again, that's one of the facts that I will highlight is most people don't realize that you could be wired to your router and the router connected to the internet, but you know you are not living in the world where nobody else is on the Wi-Fi in your house. Right. So if somebody is watching Game of Thrones or you know any other Netflix series or something, they are affecting your traffic. Uh, well, one thing I was surprised when when I uh, you know hooked up the XR500 in my house is how many other devices that I had on uh, on my network that weren't like gaming devices i have a console and a pc for gaming but i have you know uh a streaming sticks uh i've got you know smart tv mm -hmm. smart lights all those things you know kind of take away little chunks and pieces of of your of your bandwidth and your internet and yeah uh, that's the, the i think that's sort of the difference is, is that this is kind of built purposely built uh with that in mind and how to how to uh just prioritize that sort of traffic for gamers Exactly right. I think the biggest difference is uh, the gaming router comes pre-optimized for gaming applications, gaming scenarios. It's meant to help you reduce the lag both inside the house, 
but with features and that will go into uh, also outside the house like how do you connect to the local server for uh, mobile gaming and uh, and or even the console gaming right how do i connect to the nearest server so i don't have the latency or how do i even connect to a nearest player in peer to peer gaming uh, where you know you don't you don't want to suffer high latency right so wh- one of one of the questions that that some people have is that you know QO, like all of these routers have have a level of QoS and that QoS is QoS is QoS but that's not the case uh yeah i think it's it kind of comes down to what is quality of service right quality of service essentially uh leads back to you have limited internet bandwidth mm-hmm. and you have lots and lots of applications that are trying to connect to the internet they are trying to stream from the internet and so on what quality of service essentially does for you is make sure that the traffic that you really want to prioritize you want smooth streaming or you want to make sure there is no packet dropped for your gaming um quality of service settings allow you to fine tune that uh so that you can uh basically get the best experience that you want okay so within that essentially that's why um an entry entry level router will have limited capabilities uh on what you can do with the quality of service settings versus a nighthawk will have has a lot more capabilities and you know frankly that's why it has been uh popular with gamers until now is you can do that mm mm-hmm. versus now with XR500 both hardware acceleration and software has up the game considerably uh because now you have network monitoring tools okay. you have lot more uh fine controls where you can actually really find out what you can do with it and even adjust the knobs as you go along um through your usage with it the one of the things that I think is really cool is not only I can control like uh through the anti buffer bloat I can control the bandwidth coming into the house and and prioritizing a chunk of that just for gaming but then I can also prioritize which device yeah. and then I can even go deeper and prioritize uh on that device which types of traffic is is going to be uh uh prioritized for that so I can optimize it for like Fortnite or PUBG and and all of those kind of working together uh it's just that's the the biggest difference is that i'm able to use this and make those adjustments where i could probably make those adjustments mm-hmm. on, on these but um because of uh the the dashboard i'm able to do it a lot easier and on the fly as opposed to uh, like setting it and sort of forgetting it Yeah exactly right? I think that to that point right Netgear uh, Nighthawk router so I have, have always had this feature or most of them have this feature called dynamic QoS right mm-hmm. uh which is a lot more intelligent than most other router quality of service where you're just going to uh turn it on and it will automatically detect the type of traffic you have mm-hmm. right uh but again from the XR500 uh, we kind of brought in these dashboards that tell you how to which device actually is suffering and then or hogging either way and then adjust that in a much more finer control that you know uh gamers will really love that's the cool thing is that i can see that like my my smart tv is actually hogging a bunch of bandwidth uh, that's in the other room and i can i uh, i can um kind of readjust the amount of bandwidth that's going to say pony adventures on 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 a streaming service uh versus you know when I'm when I'm gaming so I can make those adjustments. Um I think we're going to take a question from from the audience. So let's see. Okay. So we've remember we're going to give away the XR500. So remember to in your questions to use the hashtag uh MPG live. Now we're going to take our first question from YouTube. So from Anirudh and X10 has fiber optics can we connect SB fiber optic directly to the router <laughs> uh so looks like you are lucky few one of the lucky few who actually get ISP fiber directly uh so yeah so recently X10 we actually did uh release a new firmware that will convert your uh fiber optic port uh into an internet or a wan port 
So you should be able to update your existing X10 if you have one or go ahead and buy one and just put the new firmware and uh, convert it into a WAN port and then you just, all you need is get the right SFP module and voila, it connects to your fiber uh, router. And then uh, does it support DSL through the fiber port? Uh, no, you do need an external DSL modem. So uh, X10 will connect directly to the fiber port uh, on the router. Okay, let's see that. We're live here. Uh, it looks like we're going to take another question. So just one second. Oops, I think we've lost our... And remember to use the hashtag MPG Live uh, for your chance to win and uh, XR500 today. So, so we're got a little bit of some. Are the tools and controls. So that's Fred. Fred from Facebook. Uh, accessible with Android app or only on the web UI? Yeah, so. Um, most of the tools and controls are accessible only through web UI, which you can uh, use like on a tablet or something from the second screen point of view. And mainly because as we looked at uh, the current applications and the tools we have, we felt, uh, we felt the format of the web UI uh, fits the best. Um, we are always in the lookout for updating our product offering and um, providing the controls to the app is always part of our thinking. Yeah, you, you, you can view it on a, on a, a tablet. Um, you can, uh, I use a laptop when I'm uh, playing on my console or you can open it up and, and view it on a, like as you said, a second screen yeah. uh, on, the, uh, well, on your PC rig. Uh, it's pretty helpful because you, it allows you, like when you're switching different games, you know, Destiny, um, there's a, a feature that is a, a geo filter that allows you to connect to servers within a certain distance of where you are in order to, to reduce the lag between exactly. you and the server. Uh, some games have a lot tighter radius. Call of Duty has a, a much tighter radius. I have it down to 300 miles when I play uh, Call of Duty, but Destiny, I kind of open it up because there's a smaller server population. And so uh, you want to open it up to like about a thousand uh, miles. And, and so you can make those adjustments as you switch uh, what game you're you're playing? Yeah, and I think the the beauty of it is also you know our team constantly works on updating those server locations for the new games that come up, mm -hmm. right? So that you're always kept up with the 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 recent games that you want to play. So uh, you know, just recently we did that. The the, the team recently did uh, optimization for for Fortnite. Yeah, where uh, like. Those of you may not know that, like the distance between some of your servers, even if you're on the like the East Coast, there's a server in Ohio and a server in Virginia, and that's a difference of 500 miles, and that could actually increase. Uh, even though you're connecting on the East Coast, you're you're switching between those two servers, and uh, if you didn't like geo filter, mm -hmm. you could be in like let's say you're in Columbus, but you're connecting to to the server in in Virginia. Well, it would make more sense if you connected to the one in. Uh, Ohio, and with the geo filter, you can actually make that happen. Okay, another question from Jason from Facebook. I live in a rural area. I have Verizon 4G LTE wireless home internet that uses Novatel uh, router, and I get 400 kilobytes per second download and latency of around 60 milliseconds. Can I use this router behind that router to help my latency somehow? Uh, so. <laughs> It can definitely reduce the latency introduced by the no hotel router itself, especially if if you are using Wi-Fi or even the wired connection from no hotel router. Um, not knowing more, lot more about the router, uh, but it's probably going to have uh, issues with again getting a lot of traffic and aggregating through the internet bandwidth and prioritization. So if you do put XR500 behind no hotel router. Uh, it can help you at least 
manage your devices and devices getting online within your home and even if you are wired gaming it will have only one pipe and provide sort of with anti-buffer bloat and QoS settings in fact use your precious bandwidth even in a you know more finer control so it's going to help you with everything from the router back yes. um, so if you connected it to the other router I suggest that you only connect it to the yes. the XR500 and then have everything else in the house connect, connect to, the to the XR500. XR yes. yeah. And I think, see, that's that's one of the things which especially, uh, you know, Fortnite uh, has made very popular, the whole concept of mobile online gaming. Until mm -hmm. now, mobile gaming was relegated to casual games like Candy Crush or anything like that, right? Which you didn't necessarily care so much about the latency. Right. But now with Fortnite, as you can go multi-platform uh, from your iPad to your phone to your console, now you do need a Wi-Fi uh, in the home. That's not. That's not. That doesn't suck. <laughs> right. That's so true. Because like the 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 as that explosion on uh, mobile has happened only recently. Uh, the difference. Uh, I used to be in mobile development, and we would be okay with a latency of like two two seconds yep. and and you can't have that anymore with yep. especially with multiplayer uh first person shooters and those uh that sort of action on on the mobile it needs to be a lot more precise clash um royale is the same way yeah yeah and i think that's where uh you know kind of i would re-emphasize that a lot of people think they don't need wi-fi for gaming but you know the four stream Wi-Fi, you know it. It kind of sounds like a techno jargon, right? Right. But you know your latest mobile devices all are at least two stream, which means the more streams you have on the router, you are still going to get a better reliability and better coverage. So uh, again, if you go down to entry level router, you're not going to get those benefits. Features like multi-user MIMO again. Granted, it's a techno jargon, but you know it allows <laughs> you to do multiple right. things at the same time and. You just don't realize uh, how the benefit, how it benefits you. This also is putting out what two point six gigs yeah, up to of combined. Of combined. Yeah. So, so with mobile gaming, you're definitely going to get a lot of, of of that push, and it, you're still connected. You still, you know, can connect, connect yeah. up all your other devices wireless yeah. or wire as well. Um, we've got another another question coming in. No, no, okay. What do we got here? What do you got? Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, we got a nice shout out from somebody, uh, 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 LipTac from Austin that uh, is following us on Twitch that uh, saw us at the uh, South by Southwest gaming convention. Just wanted to say uh, uh, hi there. Um, and then let's. Let's go into a couple of the, the, the software features that are also in the, in the router. We talked about the hardware. We talked about quality of service. Um, just uh, let's do, let's just do a rundown of, of like the major features of in the in the software as well that makes this uh, a lot more of a, a of a, just a beast of a gaming router. Okay. So, you know, from gamers' point of view, we talked about GeoFilter that allows you to control your distance. Um, and then, of course, we have the anti-buffer bloat, which again, allows you to reserve some bandwidth for the critical applications that you have. Those work hand in hand with settings for quality of service, where you can easily assign a percentage of your bandwidth, both in upstream and downstream direction to a particular device. So you can say, hey, give 80% bandwidth to my gaming console. Okay. But it's intelligent enough that if your gaming device is not using that bandwidth, it will make sure the other devices still get that bandwidth, right? Or you're not gaming, it doesn't mean that the other devices are starved of that bandwidth, right? So there is that uh, auto detection of gaming traffic and intelligence is kind of built in. So, th so that allows it to be a lot more dynamic. And, yes. and it does it because, um, it's got a dedicated coprocessor just for that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's where we get the hardware acceleration to maintain the speed connectivity to you know fiber internet and you know speeds as has you know one gig on the internet. So this actually has uh, two sets of of processors. Yeah. 
So one is just doing all the regular mm -hmm. router stuff, and then the other one is doing all the, the game prioritization. Yeah. Um, those those both combined is sort of like a, a Voltron of of uh, experience here, where it just like it just makes it so so much different than than the the previous generations. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's uh, see if is there any. Uh, let's go to the questions we got. Uh, all right. So if you ask a question, you and and you want to win an XR five hundred, uh, just. Uh, type in with your comment or question uh, hashtag uh, NPG live um, and uh, you're gonna have a chance to win this uh, router which has gotten how many like reviews like almost yeah, every now we are close to like three four hundred reviews and it's a four and a half star uh, product yeah um, yeah was it uh, IGN PC gamer pretty yeah. much everybody that has touched this router um, it, it has uh, seen is believing. Uh, you know, we've used it. We're we're familiar with it, but uh, don't take our word. Just Google it. This thing really does what it says. Uh, what we're trying to do here is really um, change the way that that gamers have uh, been connecting with the internet. You know, uh, for a long time, people have said, oh, this is a gaming router. And it, and a, a lot of times it doesn't do what it, it says it's going to do. Um, and it's kind of marketing fluff. And, uh, you know, as the brand experience manager, I'm telling you, this is not uh, marketing fluff. This is the, the real deal. Um, so uh, give us a couple of questions and comments and uh, we'll uh, we'll go to it looks like we got a question coming up. So. Uh, let's see. Wow, this is a this is a good one. <laughs> let's see. You uh, from YouTube, uh, Garrett from YouTube. Uh, can I edit how my QoS works on my Nighthawk R seven thousand router? Okay. Yeah. So uh, on. Nidoc R7000 router, you have two options currently for your QoS. Uh, one which I mentioned is the dynamic quality of service, which essentially is a set it and forget it. Mm -hmm. It detects the type of device you have, type of stream you have. It even finds a difference between a Netflix and a YouTube, how okay. they work internally and prioritize. On the other hand, it does have, uh, you can turn it off and there is an advanced QoS uh, engine still built in where you can manually uh, assign the devices with the highest priority or the applications you want to run with the highest priority. So yeah, it, it's a lot more manual compared to something like an XR500, but uh, you know, yes, that can be done. Okay, uh, Bill from YouTube. Uh, how confident can I be if I choose to purchase a refurbished Nighthawk AC1900 uh, or 7000? Uh, so, it depends on the channel you purchase. If it is a Netgear certified refurbished product, uh, you should be as confident and it comes with its standard warranty. Okay. Uh, that's, a, that's a great uh, product. Um, if you're you know uh, deeper into gaming, I definitely recommend the, uh, yeah. the XR500. Uh, it looks like we got another question coming up from Twitch. When is the next model coming out? That's a great question. Unfortunately, we can't <laughs> answer that at the moment. <laughs> wow, we got we got a we, we got a question where we're like we can't answer that. Yeah, yeah. We could say. We like, always look for opportunities. Yes. is what I will leave it at. <laughs> yeah, I I don't want to Tom Holland at any anything. Um, that's a like, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, we got another question coming from Facebook. Um, do I need a router for? Uh, do I need a router for gaming if I have high bandwidth? So, absolutely great question, right? And I think which is where I think where you are kind of coming from is okay. I have high bandwidth. Do I need quality of service because? I, there's nothing backlogged on the pipe to the internet, right? right? 
two things do matter still, right? So one is your distance to your server for your online gaming is not controlled by the bandwidth you have. Right. It's purely, as you mentioned, if you have a server in Ohio versus a server in California and you know you are uh, living in New York, right? doesn't matter how much bandwidth you have because that bandwidth is really what you're getting from you to your service provider central office. After that, everything is a fair game, right? right? So uh, if you get connected, even worse, to a server in Europe or like, you know, in London or Paris or something, not, no amount of bandwidth is going to help you with that. Right. And you're also, uh, with higher bandwidth, uh, you're going to have a lower, uh, like, baseline ping, mm -hmm. but... The, that still doesn't change the fact that, you know, you've got all these other devices yeah. that are in your house that kind of are uh, a lot of times people don't realize that your smart TVs and your streaming services and uh, all those little, you know, casting uh, services, they are a little bit like uh, you've heard of um, like electric vampires, mm -hmm. like your 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 TV, <laughs> but means. these are like like bandwidth vampires, and each one of them, uh, even your Xbox uh, turned off, it will update uh, if you have that set. So it's gonna it's gonna crunch away a little pieces of bandwidth that you may not realize, and that uh, that's gonna all those little devices add up. Like I said, I have twenty devices in my house, and they all add up uh, to to chipping away a little bit at my gaming experience. Yeah, and I think, you know, going into just a little tad bit of uh, technical detail, right? Finally, your processor is still, to some extent, your bottleneck because, yeah, if you have 15 devices connected, it's still going to try to serve them right. one at a time versus if you have a quality of service, it still knows which device to pick up first. So I keep on going to that device more often than a device that doesn't need to be served so often. So... I can kind of still help prioritize which traffic gets onto that bandwidth. So anti-buffer bloat may not be important to you because right. you have enough bandwidth, but still that bottleneck going into the CPU and to the internet could still be improvised uh, with you know a good quality of service implementation. Quality of service is almost like uh, like getting a, like a heavy occupancy vehicle like lane for for whatever you're prioritizing. It gets yeah. it on like everything else could be uh, clogged in, in a traffic jam, but it's still gonna allow that to get onto the highway okay. uh, quick. I think it looks Sorry. like we have a lot uh, more questions. A lot more questions. Sorry, <laughs> uh, I hope that answers your question. All right, we got a bunch coming in. And keep them coming and remember to use that hashtag MPG Live. Okay, so Robert from Facebook, is the game database going to be supporting new games coming out like BOF4 and Halo Infinity. Uh, absolutely, yes. We are constantly updating the, the game profiles. Uh, we're we're going to keep adding. Those are great games that are coming out. There's a whole bunch of games. As you know, as a gamer, all the games come out in the fall uh, for the, a big push, and so we'll, we'll be updating. Yeah, and you know the, the good thing about uh, the way the software is built in is uh, most updating the game database for most games will not require uh, downloading a new firmware and you know restarting the router or something. We could easily push the new database uh, without the customer even uh, doing anything. Okay, so it's, it's super easy to update. So, uh, so look for, for those coming out in the fall. Ricardo from Facebook, uh, are there any optimization presets for Xbox Live and PSN? Which yeah, so I think some of these things which we will be will be looking at as additional features. So this is a great feature request, I would mm -hmm. say. Yeah, and definitely. And I think uh, you know we are we are looking at some of the services and uh, you know uh, looking at setting up some some things like profiles and other aspects. So this is a great feature request, and uh, we will certainly look into that. Yeah, um, I use it on my Xbox uh, X, and I have uh, no issues with it. So it's pretty solid from that. So. Uh, I couldn't say for PlayStation though. Yeah. Uh, so also, does this router support 1G Robert. from Robert uh, ISP services? Cut through uh, HW supported needed for one gig ISP services. Yeah, this router definitely supports one gig ISP services. And as we were mentioning earlier, it, it sports a dual core 
main processor that does the heavy lifting and one of the reasons why uh, the quality of service works best is because that is actually also hardware accelerated to ensure that there is no speed degradation when you are applying quality of service algorithms. Okay. Uh, Mihai from YouTube, is there any chances for an X10 to get the new router feature? Um, I'm assuming you are referring to the gaming features. And at this point, we are not looking at adding the gaming feature to X10 router. Uh, but again, we'll evaluate your request. Uh, Red Axe from YouTube. What ready NAS should I connect to my gaming router? So uh, most of our ready NAS uh, have Ethernet connectivity, and uh, really, you could go, you could not go wrong with any of them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it really depends on your speed uh, needs. Uh, in fact, this router also supports USB 3.0 connectivity. So if you have a USB uh, hard disk that you are using today, you could connect to that as well and convert that into a uh, network storage of sorts. Okay. But on the on the Netgear ReadyNAS products, there is no, uh, most of the ReadyNAS products that have one gig connectivity can work with it. It actually has two ports yeah. sit, sitting right off this side. Yeah. Remember, keep, keep the questions coming. This is awesome. Uh, remember, use hashtag NPG live for your chance to win. All right, we got a question coming in. It looks like from Twitch. Wow, that's a big question too. <laughs> so, I guess while the custom uh, yeah. question is going on, right, like I, I actually do want to also highlight one feature that this router has, which most people may not be as aware of the benefit, right, uh, which is the VPN client. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, uh, this is one of the first Nighthawk routers uh, that have actually a VPN client built in. And with the idea that, you know, as we get into an environment where there is a lot of conversation about uh, denial of service attacks or, you know, swatting or, uh, you know, the ISP snooping your traffic and so on. Right. The feature like VPN client is a perfect um, shield for your internet traffic to avoid, you know, getting swarmed by some denial of service, somebody trying to jam your internet connection, break your gaming mojo. And also, uh, with uh, with the change in the environment in, in the internet, uh, a lot of third parties can now you know get your information, yeah. see where your traffic is, and that's an, another way that you can protect your privacy as yeah. well. Wow, holy cow, is this a question? <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Also, uh, let's talk about how easy it is to set up uh, or, like with an extender, like a range mm -hmm. extender. The, the one thing I thought was super awesome about this is it's just it's just a press of a button. Yeah, so what we have done is with, again, a lot of people want this whole home Wi-Fi connectivity, but they also want the benefit of these gaming features and gaming uh, uh, router uh, you know, advantages, have USB and other mm -hmm. features, right? So what we did is the recently announced Nighthawk uh, mesh product line uh, such as Nighthawk X6S and X6 and so on, those extenders can be very easily paired with such a router with just a push button, as you mentioned, um, and give you the same Wi-Fi name through the house. So if you have mobile devices, you can achieve the whole home Wi-Fi exactly. with a gaming router for your actual main connectivity to the internet. Exactly, and and that's with like, you know, Clash Royale, uh, Fortnite, and PUBG on mobile. Yeah. You know, I could still get that same sort of connectivity uh, yeah. through. Okay, so when are you gonna update the server locations for PUBG? The server locations are showing up in the wrong locations. Can you add a feature so I, when I'm in bridge mode, I can still monitor my modem stats? i.e. connection speed, noise margin, et cetera. Uh, that's an awesome like, feature request. Yeah, definitely we can update uh, the servers and that's from, uh, we could definitely look into that yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, so we'll, thanks for bringing it to our notice. I think if uh, we'll definitely look at 
uh, what's you know what we can do to update that as soon as possible. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Justin from Facebook, when it comes to the features on this router that benefits uh, consoles at all, uh, would it benefit anything hardwired? Is it only for Wi-Fi that's utilizing the features? It benefits hardwired or Wi-Fi uh, for console. Uh, one, one of the greatest features for console that we that is in here is the GeoFilter, which we were just talking about, because uh, PC gamers for the longest time have been able to kind of filter out a little bit of where their servers are. Uh, but console, it uh, your Xbox uh, or your PlayStation is just going to put you into the first uh, game that raises its hand. And, and as we were saying earlier, that could be a distance of 500 miles, could be yeah. a distance of like 1,000 miles. And, that's a, and that difference is, uh, you may notice that sometimes you're playing like Call of Duty World War II and you get a great connection and you're having an awesome time. You're getting you know, your 20 to one kills and, and you connect to the next game and, and, and there you are you know, struggling. And that's because a lot of times that's the difference in, in connection with yeah. the server yeah. and that latency. And shots that you could have, should have made, uh, you're 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 not making at all. Yeah, and I think you should certainly check out our YouTube channel for some of the videos that demonstrate the how to set it up, right? Like before starting your game, you just kind of set that profile up in the router and say, hey, I'm going to go play Fortnite or PUBG or something. Yep. And on the console, basically, the servers that it connects to is already restricted within your region. And to address your other point about Wi-Fi versus wired, right? And this is where, where we talked about the quality of service. In fact, all of that traffic from the LAN side or your home side is bottlenecked at the internet and the quality of service it works across the entire traffic profile coming from within the house. So you're going to get the same quality of service, <coughs> excuse me, uh, connected wired to your wired PC, to your console and to your mobile phone or tablet. Yes. So it's all going to go through the same features uh, yeah. and, and then go out. All right. Looks like we have another question coming in from Twitch. Um, and while we're getting that question up, oh, there we go. Um, bounty, bounties. Are there oh. any bug bounties currently? So... We don't have any bugs, do we? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, never. Uh, yeah, so I think you should, uh, we'll follow up on that. I think we usually announce some bug bounty programs on our security, through our security advisory team. Uh, I'm not aware of any specific bug bounty uh, going on for the XR500 uh, router. But, but that's... You know, it, 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 it has been built with uh, sort of the features and functionality that we already know from our award-winning bug bounty program where like, you know, when we won the award from the security community, right, for Netgear. Right. Uh, and that's where, you know, um, we evaluate on a program by program basis, right? Currently, I'm not aware that we are running a bug bounty on XR500. But that's a great question. We'll look into it. And, you know, as, as always, those are great. Those are yeah. great programs in order to help us make this product better for you. Yeah. Uh, next question coming in off of YouTube. Is there a built-in security for the Netgear Nighthawk XR500? Yeah, so the XR500 comes with our you know, standard Wi-Fi security uh, paradigms. It has VPN client and server uh, features. Uh, and uh, you know, we have done considerable work in improving the platform uh, security over the last uh, year or so. All right. Um, we're also, we're going to give that that shout out one more time. Um, your chance to win the XR500 uh, Nighthawk Pro Gaming Router. Uh, use the hashtag NPG Live and with your questions and your comments, um, and you'll have a chance to win uh, after uh, conclusion. Um, looks like we got a question coming in. Um, let's see what else we've gone over. QoS gone over. Uh, Easy, how we haven't talked about how easy it is to set it up like the 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 setup on this is literally i kid you not it's about five minutes and yeah. it gets you get walked through you start out with like a speed test yeah. and, and then optimization of your network uh you set up your um 5g uh 2.4 and and then it gets you right into the 
Yeah, and I think that's you know that's where being the leader in the home retail router segment right helps us constantly look at the uh, ways to improve this experience right. How do you get straight through uh, from start to finish with minimum uh, you know distraction? So in this case, in fact, it even has the smart connect feature, right? Mm -hmm. Which you don't even need to keep the 2.4G and 5G separate if you don't want to. Right. So you can just create one home network with one uh, network name through the house and uh, yeah, basically start to finish within three or four, four screens. You end with a speed test just to, so it allows the QS engine to adopt to the internet bandwidth you have and voila, you're dropped right into the dashboard where you can start using uh, it right away. And all of the panels in the dashboard all have a help feature. Yeah. You can move them, you can get rid of them, you can set up whatever whatever is important to, to how you use the router. Exactly, so the with the second screen usage in mind, right, like you can set up the dashboard that you care for, you can see the per second ping statistics, you can see the bandwidth utilization, and those are dynamic um, modules or what we call our apps. Uh, that will keep you updated as you're playing the game or before you start the game to see, hey, is the network condition good enough, right? So which is where as you go from a casual gamer to a prosumer to almost borderline pro, right. it has everything you need uh, where you can start with pre-optimized profile, don't want to go into details versus as your game improves, you can improve your network with it. And you can you can make those fine adjustments to, to, to get it so that it's the best connectivity that you yeah. that you can. Well, let's go to the next question off of Twitch. With server-side netcode adjustments being made, at what degree does having a high-end gaming router provide a more successful gaming experience in the MMO arena? Wow. That's a, that's a pretty good question. We we're just, I think we were just talking about that where, you know, uh, a high-end gaming router is going to give you the ability to to make those finer adjustments to the prioritization. You're going to be able to, with not only just profiling of, of the game, um, it, like, for example, Fortnite or, or PUBG yeah. running off of Unreal, um, you can you can make those those fine adjustments on that prioritization based off of the traffic that you have and and, and just dial in a little bit better yeah and i think you know I, I i would reiterate like if there is a common misconception that uh for somehow your lion land wired in is somehow plumbed directly to your internet connection like one is to one right no right. it's not right it does go through a lot of hops within uh, the router's hardware, you know, that's uh, that's the complexity that, uh, pro uh, you know, the product management or the product software takes care of uh, so that you don't have to worry about, but it's not a straight through connection, which is where even if you have a powerful router, that's as good as how it deals with these conflicts or these uh, changes in priority across multiple devices. Yeah, it's it, and, and, and that is a misconception where I plug into this, and then it's just a pass through straight yeah. into the internet. Exactly. Um, and then all these other devices that we that we have, you know, they Do have the same to, thing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, all of them are taking up a little little pieces of, of of your bandwidth, and you need to be able to have that that high end prioritization that's yeah. really just purposely built for the MMO online experience, the yeah. the online gaming experience, because those that traffic's changed over yeah. the last five years. Yeah. Uh, okay, so how well does the router support two or more consoles online at the same time and playing the same game, especially online games like Call of Duty? That's a good question. Yeah, so I think uh, from that point of view, as long as you give equal priority to both of them and make sure that other devices have you know the right priority setting, uh, the router should be able to handle both with equal uh, finish. Now, in that situation with multiple multiple devices playing at the same time, I would suggest setting the anti-buffer to, to reserve a little bit more yes. of uh, a cushion just for the game yeah. uh, prioritization because you can you can equal both the consoles or both the PCs, yeah. but you're going to want to give yourself a little bit more space on the, yeah. on the on the overall bandwidth. Yeah, that was a great question. Oh, we got we got more questions from YouTube, and uh, we'll get those in just a second. We're gonna take a time to, once again, 
your chance to win XR500 gaming router. Use the hashtag MPG Live. And uh, uh, let's, Angelo, how much more time we we have for questions? <coughs> Um, how well does wireless signal travel through old stone walls? Uh, so it doesn't travel as well is the right answer, right? Uh, uh, but which is where the stronger the source of the signal, the less deterioration you are going to get across a stone wall, right? Mm -hmm. um, but this, this is exact perfect scenario where pairing it with a good extender like a Nighthawk mesh extender can help you uh, kind of bridge that, reduce that, uh, you know, drop off because you can put an extender just on the other side of the wall and it, like, you know, the Nighthawk XXS is a four by four on the back hall. So mm -hmm. if this is four by four, that is four by four, they can talk to each other in much stronger way. And then that extender can repeat the signal and boost the signal across the wall. So that's a perfect scenario where you could put you know a how many how many extenders can you i guess daisy chain just a real quick question on that um well uh in theory as many as you want uh because you know it's basically for every extender other ones become a client okay uh, but you know in practice we would you would want to probably limit it to two or three um just so that you're not uh chopping off the bandwidth every hop okay uh, question from YouTube. Is there a successor for the X10 and when's it going to come? This is one of those other ones. <laughs> yeah, which is, we, um, we can't tell you. <laughs> uh, but but yes, there's probably a successor. Uh, so I, I would say stay tuned. Uh, yes. Okay. And we got uh, a couple more questions and we'll just do... few more questions and and then wrap up wrap up so uh remember uh hashtag mpg live get your questions in while you can and uh i think we've got what about 10 more minutes and uh uh we'll see uh after that i guess we'll announce the winner and contact oh, we got a huge question coming in how well does the wireless signal no oh, i think that'd be 45 minutes okay yeah. Let's see, what do we oh. got? Got a question, here we go. Uh, another one from YouTube, is that? That's the one thing I love about, <laughs> about live is, is okay, here we go. Uh, when does Netgear Nighthawk M1 start sale in India and support for Indian 4G bands? Uh, I would certainly convey this question to the right team internally. Um, uh, thank you for your interest. And yeah, M1, you know, M1 is one of those like really powerful um, mobile routers. It's not, it's not plain hotspot. It actually is a dual band uh, mobile router with a 4G LTE connectivity. We have been able to show almost like a one gig internet connection on supported networks. Wow. So yeah, that it kind of has real cool functionality. And so I will definitely get back to you on it. Uh, you know, we'll try to update the answer on the forum. Yeah, it's it's super popular as well. Yeah. I know a few people that that's their their internet from wherever they are, you know, especially in, in places where you can't get uh, traditional sort of internet service. Yeah. Okay, uh, any, any more questions? Oh, we got some coming through. So, um, what else? Let's see. Um, we talked about. Uh, where is this? Let's see. We've got. So, uh, one of the things that uh, we've got like four uh, Ethernet ports off the back of the X XR500. Um, how, like, uh, with that and and setting up the, so it's you know if you've got what if you you have more than four devices what, what do you do from there so yeah so if you uh, 
you know, we get asked that a lot that, hey, is four ports insufficient or not? Or what do I do if I have more than four devices? And that's a valid question now with a lot of home automation. Uh, a lot of the home automation ecosystems bring in their own hub uh, mm -hmm. devices and you, that you need to connect to. So we can pair it perfectly with, uh, we have a, actually a Nighthawk Pro Gaming Switch. Actually, we have two of them. Yeah. Uh, one is the, uh, you know, S8000, which is eight gigabit ports, and the other one, the latest one is SX10. Which has uh, uh, two multi-gig ports on, on yeah. top of that, which is pretty pretty amazing for a consumer product. Yeah. You just can't get that. It's, usually it's an enterprise device. But yeah, if you have more than four devices, we've got you covered is what, yeah. what, we're, what we're saying. Okay, so we got another uh, question coming in. Uh, what, how information you... 10 gig network will be trying. Okay, there is a game stream. Is this a game stream approved router? I love streaming from my NVIDIA GeForce PC to my uh, uh, NVIDIA Shield. Wow, that's a that's a good question there. Yeah. Um, is it uh, no, approved? I'm, I'm assuming that they are Certi certified. certified. Uh, so yeah, so it's not. Uh, it's not gone through the process yet. We are looking into uh, we are looking into working with uh, Nvidia and kind of trying to understand what it takes. Mm -hmm. And if there is certainly interest, we'll uh, you know look into that. Yeah, that's definitely a good question. It's something that we definitely um, you know can look into. How important do you think 10G networking will be in the future? Do you anticipate the next routers to be 10G ca capable? So, um, you know, only a few years ago, right, I didn't think we had, many of us anticipated going to 1G internet. Mm -hmm. And here we are. And in fact, in the United States, we are talking about multi-gig internet with DOCSIS 3.1 and ever increasing the speed. As the number of applications increase, you are going to have more and more uh, bandwidth utilizing um, uh, applications that may require to go more than one gig. Uh, some point in the future, yes, I see 10 gig. We actually see 10 gig network in some parts of the world already. Uh, it's a, it's going to be a slow rollout. Like you know, you can imagine how long it has taken for your desktop and laptop to have from having a one gigabit Ethernet connection to even a 2.5 or 5 or 10 gig. Right? It's right. been you know uh, close to almost 10 years to reach that. Uh, so yes, somewhere in the future I do see 10 gig I hope I do see 10 gig <laughs> um, uh, but we will keep we will keep up with that technology we will see how we can answer that technology and we will be ready when it is about to you know before it becomes mainstream I just don't see that right away uh, because of the infrastructure that investment that is required by the major service providers to get a 10 gig uh, connection to the, the home. I, I think that's the bottleneck at the moment, but like the the other technology is is, is certainly becoming. It's just a matter of just getting the the infrastructure and that and and a uh, majority of our uh, uh, internet infrastructure is copper, and there's only like so yeah. much that you can push through wires. Okay, question. Uh, I have a RBK50 Orbi router and an S8000 Nighthawk switch. Should I connect? my PS4 to the Orbi or the Switch? So uh, in this case, I would say uh, the answer depends on how many other devices you have connected to either Orbi or the Switch. Um, if you are talking about doing LAN to LAN gaming or you are your PS4 is con talking to more LAN devices connected on the same Switch, you are probably better off connecting via the Switch because it has additional functionality for QoS, for streaming and other things. So like if you have a media center where you are connecting a lot of devices through the switch, right. uh, then that could be a better configuration where the switch can do the prioritization amongst its port and do only one uplink back to the RB. Um, but otherwise it's almost always uh, you know better to connect uh, the, the device as or directly to the router uh, uh, if that's possible. So if you're like running uh, 
just as the PS4 as the only console you would say connected to the if, yeah it, to the Orbi exactly um, and then other stuff that you connected like you know smart homes or, or uh, you know a Wi-Fi wire speakers and that sort yeah of so stuff. typically you know what I have seen is right with a uh, with a very versatile switch such as S8000 right people usually may put it in their entertainment console so their smart TV mm -hmm. their gaming console their you know uh, AV receiver, which is now internet right. connected, all of that is routed through the switch and only one uplink connects back to the main router, right? Okay. And that's a great way of having a very neat setup. And like, you know, actually I have something similar at my house where I'm doing that, where I'm connecting few devices to the switch and the switch up, uplink connects back to the router. So, you know, that's one great way of achieving it. And I said thousand has enough functionality to prioritize amongst those devices. So, you know, you couldn't go wrong either way. Okay. Um, I think that's all the time that we that's have. Uh, thank you all for your, for your uh, questions and comments. And uh, uh, once, you know, once again, we're going to be giving away the, the XR 500. We'll be contacting the, the winner. And thank you for, for taking the time to, to talk routers it's always awesome <laughs> like but to, to get like uh the the expert opinion and and expertise on these so yeah thank you for having me it's always you know great to good. go behind the scene yeah. and explain what goes through and uh, making a great product it's it, it is it's a fantastic product it's available everywhere if you can if you can google you can find it uh and it's i you know I highly recommend it, but don't take it from me. Take it from like the just tons of reviews on it. Um, and that's it. So thank you, and uh, we'll see you again. Thank you.